Hello again. For those of you who've been following my channel, uh, you may have noticed that I start lots of projects. There's lots of videos about the start of projects and precious few, if any, about the completion of projects. Well, one day that will happen, I promise. But for now, here's the start of another project. This is uh, a, pro a video series, actually, about setting up a pier in which I can mount my astronomical telescopes. Um, so this is the pier. It's a length of 8 inch ductile iron pipe. Can't quite remember the height of it, but it's about up to my shoulders. So quite a nice height for length, uh, mounting decent sized telescopes on. I've got more than one telescope. A couple of them are a fair size and I'm planning to build one one day. Um, I've already got the lens for it. There's another started but unfinished project. It keeps me from being bored, you know. So this is at my place in France. This is my workshop you're looking into there. And the telescope is going to be mounted somewhere over there, far enough away from the house that it's not going to pick up heat from the roof and so on. Far enough away from the tree, hopefully, that it's not going to obscure too much of the view of the sky. But it's a compromise because the exact positioning will depend on the uh, boundary between my garden and agricultural land. I do own a field there behind the house. Um, it's used by a local farmer and um, nobody's going to be very impressed if I mount a telescope pier there. But um, I'll explain the idea to you. The pier itself is going to be removable. I don't want it standing there all year round when I'm not there, so it's going to be put up when I'm here and want to use a telescope. So what we're going to have to do is put a concrete block into the ground over there where the pier is going to be mounted. And protruding from that concrete block there will be six stainless steel threaded studs. Um, the holes in the bolt circle there are about 23 or 24 millimetres in diameter. The studs are going to be 20 millimetre stainless steel bar. And there's 12 holes in the flange, but I'm only going to use six. Partly because my builder friend, who's going to be helping me, raised an eyebrow at my wish to put 12 in. And partly because, I guess if we do make a mistake with one of the six and we can't get the thing on, we can always cut it and then use some of the other holes to drill down into the set concrete and add in another bolt that way. Although hopefully we won't need to do that and I don't think we'll have to do that. Um, so there's going to be six threaded studs, each with a, a nut on top. And the studs are going to be stainless steel because they're going to be permanently installed. It's going to be a cubic metre of concrete. Seems quite a lot, but that tends to be what's recommended um, by people who, who know about these things. Um, the pier itself ideally should have some triangular fins going down to ground level to help stabilise it further because vibration is the enemy. This doesn't have that, it's a complete piece of cast ductile iron and I'm not going to start to tamper with it. What I'm going to do is, if it proves to be prone to vibration once it's all mounted and bolted in place, I'm going to get some bags full of sand that can be dropped down inside the tube um, to deaden everything and hopefully that will do the trick. It will be a question of suck it and see, one step at a time. Um, at the top, of course, there will be a, a mounting plate and sort of a mounting bracket or fork of some kind. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do there, but it's going to be an interesting and enjoyable piece of work when I get to that stage. Well, it's all interesting and enjoyable. So what have I done so far? Well, I've painted the pipe. It was a kind of standard blue colour. It was a, it's a water pipe, basically. Um, I've painted this nice light grey uh, tractol machinery paint, very nice high quality paint and it's a good colour I think, uh, quite kind of uh, restrained but you know at the same time got a bit of presence to it. And on this crappy piece of chipboard down here I've uh, already marked out six holes. So the chipboard is going to be the basis for a jig um, for setting the concrete, uh, sorry, the the stainless steel studs in the concrete. Um, I may use the chipboard itself because it's only going to be a one-off or I decide to get a bit um, more, uh, you know, quality about it. I might transfer the holes onto a bit of plywood. But anyway, that gives me the bolt circle for the for the, 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 the studs. Again, how elaborate the jig needs to be, I don't know. We'll need to think about that. 
going to show you a minute in a uh, in a minute uh, a little diagram of how the whole thing's going to be when it's set up. Just a wee bit more detail on the the end of this pipe. You'll see that there's a kind of step there that goes up in the middle. Um, no doubt that there'd been it's a water pipe, so no doubt that there'd been some kind of a gasket in here to seal the join between the two pipes, or at least I assume that would be the case. Some kind of a filler anyway but that leaves me with the concern that when it's bolted to the to the base it might nevertheless kind of have a bit of a tendency to try to rock a little on this flange now the step here is about about five mil unfortunately it's not exactly even all the way around and it's deeper in some places than others but I think that one way to deal with that might be for the bottom end of the pipe to make a ring of uh, plate steel about five mil thick that goes all the way around and has the the six uh, holes for the studs um, transferred into it. That way I think it should stabilize it more. It might not make a huge amount of difference but I think when you're trying to counter movement in a telescope here, given the magnifications involved, every little helps. That's what my thinking is at the moment anyway. We'll see how it goes. So Look, you don't need CGI. All you need is two wonderful inventions. One is one of these. Fantastic four-color ballpoint pen. They've existed all my life. I'm sure this is a French invention. Bic, French company, I believe. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong. Four colors of pen. Four colours of ink. The only other thing you need is a large glass of home brewed mead watered down with sparkling water to make a tall, refreshing drink. Ice cold, but here serving as a paperweight to stop the drawing from blowing away in the, the wind. So, what have we got? Here's a diagram of the, the setup. This here is the here itself, obviously, the ductile iron pipe flanged at both ends. This here in red is the concrete block on which it will sit. That's a cubic metre of concrete. The black lines there are the threaded studs which will be set into the concrete and go up through the flange and then be fixed onto the, the flange with nuts. So that's all very self-explanatory. The two other red blocks are also concrete and they will support a wooden decking platform which will be square and which will be all around the pillar on, on all sides. But there will be a square gap in the middle so the decking will at no point touch the pier and the concrete pads on which the decking will sit will be completely separate from the concrete in which the pier will sit. The point being that you can stand on the pier, you can walk around on it, you can jump up and down on it, and in theory at least, this shouldn't vibrate, apart from whatever vibrations are transferred through the earth here. Um, so, that's the plan. Obviously the telescope will be mounted on top here, and that will be another, another day's work. I'm not going to be able to do any of that this year now because this is my second last visit here for the year and on my last visit, which will be in October, we are planning a little camper van trip to visit lighthouses in the local vicinity, which will be very nice indeed. But um, I think that kind of explains the, the thing anyway. The pier sitting on this concrete block, surrounded by decking, which is sitting on four separate concrete pads, um, oh yeah, and there'll be a trap door in the middle of the, the decking, obviously, so that when I remove the pier, because the pier will be removable, I won't be leaving it up. So once that's taken out, there'll be a wooden trap door that can be closed over it, so it'll just be like a simple wooden square, so that my neighbour who does my grass for me will uh, hopefully just have to navigate around this wooden square with his ride-on lawnmower. Um, I've probably said more than enough about it. You get the picture. So, just taking this a little bit further, um, I've screwed two thinnish pieces of chipboard together 
to begin to make uh, the jig for setting the, the stainless steel studs in the correct positions. Um, I'd rather have used plywood, but I didn't have any spare plywood lying around and had this chipboard lying around and um, I didn't really want to spend money that I didn't need to spend, so I'm sure this will do. It's only for a, a one-off job anyway. Um, so I've marked out six of the holes, um, six of the positions of six of the holes in the, the flange of the, at the end of the pipe um, by transferring directly and using a ballpoint pen to trace around inside the holes. Hopefully that will be accurate enough. And just to keep it as accurate as possible, having marked out the centres of the holes as best I could by eye, um, I'm going to go up through four different sizes of drill bits to, to try and keep the, the holes centre to where they're marked. The two pieces of chipboard screwed together, well I may leave them together or I may separate them and that will give us two ends of a jig. Um, that will depend on what my uh, builder friend wants to do and how he wants to, how he wants to do the, the, the jig for casting into the concrete. OK, I'll get started. Um, it's the, the beginnings of the jig, uh, the jig in its rudimentary form. It's clamped to the top of the column and the drill bit here now I'm using to test the alignment. So as you can see it goes down quite, quite nicely through the hole there. And in fact it does through each of the six holes. And bearing in mind that although the drill bit is the same thickness, same diameter as the studs are, the um, the the holes in the flange are, are a couple of millimetres, two or three, three or four millimetres actually bigger than the holes in the plywood. So it should be a relatively easy job to align the studs in the concrete so that the flange will just drop on top of it. That's the plan anyway. Um, won't be on this job again now until next year. Um, so uh, I'll follow up in this video.